Okay, good afternoon and welcome to our last digital spring training session. These sessions are brought to you by Community Futures Entrecorp, serving the Medicine Hat area, and Community Futures Chinook, serving the Tabor and Brooks region. If you're unfamiliar with us and our services, we offer various of services for local businesses in all stages, from startups to maintenance and expansion. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Grace Evans and I'm the Digital Service Squad team member for Community Futures Chinook and Entrecorp. As a Digital Service Squad team member, I provide small businesses with free support for online marketing, website development, and social media, and so much more. Thank you for thank you everyone for joining me today for our spring training session on Canva Quick Tips. Please feel free to ask as many questions as you'd like in the Q&A section and leave general questions in the chat. If you want to view the presentation in full screen, the expand icon is located in the top right corner of my presentation. It is perfectly all right to be a beginner. In content creation, even if your design skills seem to be stuck in the era of Microsoft clip art and word art, flashy graphics and intricate designs do not solely define the world of content creation. It's about conveying an idea and stories and connecting with your audience. While polished visuals can enhance your content, it is the authenticity of your message and the value you provide that truly matters. So if you find yourself grappling with outdated design skills, embrace it as an opportunity to learn and improve. Uh, remember that content creation is a journey of growth and with dedication, practice, and a willingness to explore new techniques, you'll gradually evolve and discover your own unique style that resonates with your audience. Embrace your beginnings and let your creativity shine through, regardless of where you are currently standing with your design skills. When it comes to content creation, there are a few common design mistakes that creators often make. Here are some of the most prevalent ones to watch out for. Typos, they are distracting and can lead the reader to believe that you as a business uh, as a whole does not pay attention to detail. So uh, your marketing can convey back into different areas of your business and showing that unprofessionalism and that not attention to detail in your marketing really is a reflection of your business as a whole. So watching out for typos is a huge thing when it comes to design. Typos uh, are huge when it comes to a big design mistake that I often see with businesses. Uh, next would be too much text. Say it with visuals, not with words. Cluttered designs that are full of itty bitty text and lots of copy um, are instantly a scroll pass for a lot of consumers. So anything you can kind of condense on and throw in maybe your caption or in a blog post even that you can link to say a social media post is worth it. As it says, say it with visuals, not with words. Uh, these these channels we're using like Instagram, Facebook, even TikTok, all those sorts of platforms, they are visual platforms, not blog posts that someone is wanting to read through. So a strong picture of a product with a short to the point caption says it a lot better than a Canva design or a design in general that's cluttered with text. Uh, next, common mistake I see quite often is completely ignoring your business's branding. Abandoning your branding can make your business come across as unprofessional. Um, this is especially something I'm going to get to later in the presentation as well. Uh, with design platforms like Canva, where you're using templates, I find it's really easy to just grab a template or grab a photo and just roll with it. Um, without relaying it back to your brand identity or your, your feeling of your brand. So it's really important brand colors, text, all those sorts of things to keep them in mind whenever you're creating content, whenever you're posting photos um, and really sticking to your branding. I cannot stress that enough. It, that consistent feel of branding does so much 
for your customer and client relationships when it comes to your marketing. Uh, and lastly is creating one ad and posting it on all platforms. Every platform uh, appeals to a different demographic as well as what size you see it on, like a phone versus a computer. Uh, this is also true when it comes to different platforms. So something you can post, say, on Twitter may not be the right sizing for, say, Instagram. And then this is where you end up getting weird looking photos because they crop wrong, maybe cropping out important information, maybe cropping someone at an unappealing angle. Uh, so it's really important to keep that in mind. We don't want to chop people's heads off when it comes to a good photo. It can be a good photo, but if it's not the right dimensions, it's not going to come across the right way. So by being aware of these common design mistakes in content creation, you can avoid them and create more visually appealing, engaging, and effective content that really resonates with your audience. Regularly, regularly evaluate your designs, seek feedback, and strive to continuously improve and refine your content creation skills. So just being here today, you're doing exactly that. You're taking the step, uh, the next step in uh, upping your content creation skills. Uh, next, uh, I'll be talking about visual marketing strategy. Uh, creating a visual marketing strategy is a powerful approach to capturing the attention and engaging with your target audience. Visual content has the ability to convey a message so quickly and so effectively, leaving a lasting impression on your viewers. So first, this is kind of a quick breakdown of creating a visual marketing strategy. Obviously, there you can go much more in depth with each of these points, but I just want to kind of touch quickly on each of them. So first, target market research. Know your audience and know them well. Um, as uh, if some of you attended our last spring training session, uh, it's all on target market, and this can be found on YouTube. So if you did not watch that, I definitely encourage you to go back and uh, attend that just through YouTube. It talks about uh, knowing your target market and creating a customer persona, and it goes more into detail. So I encourage you, if you did not attend, to definitely go check that out. Next, your visual marketing strategy is setting the mood. Creating a mood includes topography, content, other visuals, a color palette, and this will help you keep consistent. So this is everything from maybe creating a brand guide to help you stay consistent. And this goes back to the last slide where I talked about not abandoning your brand or abandoning your branding. Uh, this can really help uh, you set the mood by creating a brand kit or um, just putting together all the materials to set the mood of all your posts, all your marketing materials going forward. Next, Create a campaign and reoccurring themes. This also will help you stay consistent, but also help you mix things up and refrain from posting the same thing over and over again. So by sitting down and creating actual marketing campaigns, this can really help you with your content creation, being that um, you actually have a plan in place of how your content is going to be pushed out rather than putting out posts just randomly with no message with no idea, no strategy behind it, um, people um, don't connect or engage with that quite as much as they do uh, a well thought out campaign that really resonates and mirrors your brand identity. And lastly is platform. Continue, consider how you should adapt your visuals for visual strategy for each social channel. As I mentioned, what you see on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, it's all different. So make sure you're looking into each platform you plan to post on before doing so. Tailoring your visuals to fit each platform's unique requirements and best practices will only maximize the impact and the engagement you have on your audience. Uh, next is these are examples of keyboard shortcuts. These are three examples of keyboard shortcuts that I will that will assist you with the design process. I'm introducing you, you these to you today because uh, it's a quick tip 
that um, often when I'm talking with clients and I'm demonstrating Canva, they're always super intrigued on how quickly I can navigate my way through a design. And this is absolutely my secret to being able to do so uh, is these three keyboard shortcuts. So number one, control Z, undo. Number two, control C, copy. And lastly, control V, paste. Uh, keyboard shortcuts are a really valuable tool to enhance productivity and efficiency in various digital tasks. These shortcuts provide quick and convenient alternatives to navigate through menus and without using a mouse or using a menu. By memorizing and incorporating these keyboard shortcuts into your workflow, you can save precious time and streamline your actions. Now into the more Canva specific information. Uh, so customizing uh, templates. Remember Canva templates are only the starting point and you have the freedom to make them your own. Experiment with different customization options and let your creativity shine through. By leveraging Canva, Canva templates and customization features, you can create visually stunning designs effectively and effortlessly. Here is an example of me using a Canva template, but incorporating my own photography and brand colors. And it's just that customizing a template can be as simple as, simple as incorporating your branding and adding your logo. However, I encourage you to try and make your design as unique and relevant to your business as possible. Because I find when people start to use Canva templates, too often, Canva users just kind of go in, throw in their information and put it on social media. Uh, but me as a Canva user and you as a Canva user uh, will know then as consumers as well, when we're scrolling through social media uh, and you see the same posts four times from four different businesses, from four different businesses, uh, it can kind of relay the message because all you see is like, oh, I saw that post. Someone used that exact same template two posts ago. So just be wary of that and try and make your content as uh, unique to your brand as possible. So next part of the presentation, I'm going to be going into demonstrating some, some Canva tips, some hands-on stuff. So if you haven't yet made your, your screen into full screen, you might want to. Uh, it might make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. Uh, but if not, that's great as well. And so here on the screen, I have uh, my Canva, my Canva uh, project open. And kind of how I like to do my Canva projects is I like to start from the top of the design to the bottom of the design. So first off with this design, I'm going to create a title for it. Um, of course, titles, copy and all that can change as you go. Um, of course, I'm working within a text box here. So um, first tip I'm just gonna show everyone is of course, the simple as being able to adjust text. You can adjust text using um, this scroller at the top, as you can see here. But in Canva, you are also able to adjust text by stretching and grabbing onto the corner, which I find really handy as well, especially since we're working with such a small, small canvas here. The next tip I'm going to show you when it comes to text is um, aligning text in um, your design. Uh, this is another thing I continuously notice when uh, working with clients or going through Instagram as a graphic designer is that people are too, they don't align their text properly and the tool that we have at hand here, Canva, there is no reason not to. Um, as you can see here at the top, uh, there is a function called position. Uh, what you can do with your text, graphics, um, 
and whatever you're trying to align is you can click on one. You're going to then press shift to select both the text boxes at the same time. And then you're going to click position. By clicking position, it's going to bring you into a screen that looks like this. I'm going to click center. Uh, that will bring my text to the center. And I find that's just a little bit too low there. So I'm going to bring it, bring it back up. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do with this design is obviously I'm going to I'm going to pick a background color. Um, on the side here, we see my logo is this lovely shades of green here. So I'm just going to click on my background here and move up into this top corner. This square here, I'm just going to click it. That's my background. Uh, and I'm then from there just going to select a color. Obviously, since I already have the logo and such in my document, Canva kind of already curates a color palette for you, which is great and makes it easy to stay consistent to your color palette, being that I just have to click on the background color and then I'm able to see here at the top document colors. Um, so I'm gonna select this light green. But I'm also going to scroll down to the bottom here and just show you that um, if you add photos and that sort of thing to your content as well, you're able to see which colors are pulling from that photo, which I super love. Um, it's a great way, again, to bring in consistency into your designs. Um, I'm going to also change the color of my text here quick. Um, add a little bit of contrast to my design. Um, like I said, I like to work from top to bottom. So I'm then just going to add my photo that I have here. Again, uh, being able to scale photos up and down, you just squeeze and pull the corner and uh, size it to your canvas. So you can even kind of crop it uh, if it's not quite fitting. I like to use the up and down arrows on my keyboard to help me adjust and place images on my canvas. Um, so this is kind of what my design's looking like right now. Um, the next skill I'm gonna show you is just kind of um, an addition of a little, it's a design tip tip. It's definitely not necessary tool to know, but I always like to do it as something as a little extra to add to my designs. Uh, so we have these paw prints here and um, obviously just putting them on this design here. They're very distracting. Um, we can't really read the text very well at the top here, um, but I still want to incorporate these these paw prints somehow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top of my Canva uh, project. And there is this little icon here that looks like a grid and it says transparency. So I'm going to click on that. And obviously these paw prints are at 100% transparency right now. So I'm just going to pull them down. And now they kind of fade into the background which I really, really like. And it kind of provides like the same feel of having them there, but they're not quite as distracting to say the viewer um, as they were when they were just black and in your face. Um, next thing I wanna show you, and I'm just gonna add on to that quickly before I move on actually. Um, this is great for if you wanna add your logo to a design but you don't necessarily want it to be front and center. A lot of times I will throw a logo onto a design and then pull the transparency down kind of as like a watermark. So it's there, you see your logo, but it's obviously kind of faded to the background. So it's not the main focal point of the design. And so the last thing I'm gonna show you on this particular project is how to properly layer a design. So obviously here we can see that this paw print is kind of on top of his this little dog's face. And um, although it kind of looks fine, uh, I don't like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my dog, uh, my dog face here. And I'm going to 
right click and it's going to bring me into this menu here. Um, I have all these options, but what I would like to choose is the layer function. From there, I'm going to select bring to front. That brought my dog's face to the front and booted the paw prints to the back. So now there's no paw print on the dog's face. This is great for obviously when you're in designs, so properly layering things, uh, bringing text forward if you want to put a photo behind it. Great tool for that. Um, and again, that's just you right click and you go layer. And from there we see you can bring forward, bring back. Um, you can click this as well. That will show you how your, your presentation is layered. Um, I'll let you guys kind of play around with that on your own. And I'm just gonna move on to my next example. So here again, I'm going to present that obviously um, I like to work from the top to the bottom of my design. And of course, I kind of have my text already put in here. Um, I'll go over how to add text boxes and that sort of thing just in a few seconds here. Just adding my text. So I've inputted all my text, um, but one thing I'm kind of wanting to do with this is make it so these two lines of copy match my heading by making them all capital. So there's a really easy tip to this in Canva. And so just click on the text you want to edit, make sure your text box is selected. And then this tool at the top is called uppercase. So once you click on the uppercase, it will make all your text uppercase. So I really like that tool. Obviously, it makes it really nice and easy. Again, we're going to check the alignment on this text by clicking shift and then selecting all my text, clicking position, um, and it all looks uh, pretty lined up. But one thing I want to do is make sure that the spacing is even between my text. And all I have to do to do that is click this tidy up button. Oh, that didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. So now we're going to go back to the shortcut and go control Z and just go back into uh, that. Typically what the tidy up button would do is just make sure that the text is even uh, going up and down but obviously did not work the way i wanted to today but anyways we're going to move on uh, again now we're going to select our background color um, i'm going to select uh, green and change change these yellow yellow dots to match my branding um, i'm going to bring in my logo um, just drag, drag it over and bring it forward. And then from there, just adjust the, the size of my logo and include it in the corner. Um, one thing when incorporating your logo into any design, make sure it is not the headline of what you're doing. Your campaign, your message should be at the top. Your logo should never be the heading of what you're doing. Um, so incorporating it in a corner or as a watermark is much better than throwing your logo as the title of what you're doing. Uh, people read top to bottom. So always think about that when you're designing something. Uh, think about how someone's going to read it, how someone's going to uh, view it. 
And like I said, typically we're reading top to bottom. So having your logo and or contact information at the bottom is much more valuable than having it at the top of your design because your logo and phone number are the last things you want people to remember, thus putting them more towards the bottom of your design. Next skill I want to demonstrate is the use of the function frames. So that's going to bring me over into this navigation side, these, this menu on the side, this black menu on the left side of your screen here. Um, so we have design, elements, brand hub, upload, text, draw, projects, apps, etc. cetera. So um, from here, you would just go into elements and up at the top here, you click search and then there's all these options in here. As I said, I'm gonna demonstrate the use of frames, um, but of course, um, as you get into Canva yourself and making designs, I really encourage you to explore all these different options that are in here. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna show you how to use frames. So frames are an easy drop for photos. Um, this is how you get like a Polaroid looking photo, as you can see, um, having a frame that looks like a cell phone to showcase maybe your website or some sort of offer that you're having online. Um, but there's so many different options on both free and paid for Canva. So this one looks like a photo with a rip there's, like I said, so many options and they're so easy to use. And I find they just make your design look so much cleaner than just dropping random photos onto a canvas. Um, so as you can see here, I have frames um, already placed onto my project. And then I have these photos on the side here. Um, these three photos I actually found right here on Canva in Elements as well. Um, so the elements function of Canva is great. This is where you're going to find all your stock video, stock audio. If you're making videos, um, stock photography, stock graphics, obviously there's lots of paid options, lots of free options as well. Um, but that is where I found all of these photos. And once you have gotten your frame placed onto your canvas, it is honestly the simplest thing to use. So whether you're dragging and dropping a photo from, from this side of your screen or if you already have it in, um, to get it into this frame, it's as simple as clicking, holding, and hovering it over the frame. And then it auto places it right there on your canvas. Um, so I'm just gonna go through and add these photos to my design. And there we have it. I have a nice clean, design um, with the photos. They're nice and evenly placed. I didn't have to worry about cropping, editing, zooming in and out, um, and that sort of thing. So great function, especially for be beginners. I, As I have already mentioned, it really cleans up and adds a nice look to your project. Um, so I'm just gonna delete this. And then of course, play around with accents. Um, you might think it looks silly, but not everything has to be so nice and cur curated and um, play around and with how you place things and um, adding accents and playing around with what Canva has to offer. Because honestly, they have so much stuff um, like these little tape marks I'm going to add to the corner. They just kind of add like a little design design flair that I like, makes it look like it's taped onto the post, which is kind of cute and fun. Uh, so definitely play around with those things. Um, and as I mentioned, this is a good example, um, this logo here. Um, I can obviously, I'm gonna click on this little paw print in the corner. Uh, this is a logo I made in Canva, just in case everyone's wondering. Um, but we can see that there's both colors in here. So I want the color of the paw to match the background so it looks like it kind of uh, doesn't just have a white paw print there. So again, I just went into the colors, matched them with what was already in my document. 
Um, again, something you have to play around with to get more comfortable, but a uh, very awesome tool to use. Uh, next skills I want to show is the use of grids. So often, um, and you're probably not the first person to post if you have a collage onto Instagram, and then in the bottom corner, you see like pick collage or collage this and that in a little watermark in the corner of someone using just a random app to create a collage. Canva actually has a great feature for this that allows you to post multiple photos onto one canvas and make it look really clean and nice. Uh, this is great for not only social media posts, but posters. Anytime you're wanting to post multiple photos, I encourage you to try and find a grid. Again, this is found in the search right in our menu on the side in elements here. Uh, and we can see it right here, it's called grids. Um, there's three picture options, four picture options, um, just so many different options for uh, different setups. So definitely encourage you to go check that out. If, especially, like I said, if you're wanting to um, post multiple photos onto one design, uh, instead of trying to wing it and weirdly layer things together, use a grid. It is so clean and so nice to work with. Um, and again, it's as simple as clicking the photo and dragging it and dropping it on top of our design here. So I'm going to just do that. And obviously we can see that this photo then is kind of weirdly cropped. Um, and I don't like how the bed is getting cut off. Um, it's not stuck like this. What we can do is we can double click and it allows you to crop and edit the photo within the grid, which I love uh, because you're not settling for something kind of being cut in the way you don't want it to. Um, so just I'm just going to drag it over so they're in the center. Um, on here, you can rotate, um, which is kind of cool. Um, you can zoom in and out of the perspective just adjusting it into that frame. And I'm just going to drag and drop the rest of these, kind of center them, um, and just add my logo. And that is as simple as a post honestly needs to be. Um, I think a lot of times um, when we are given tools such as Canva, it gets really easy to get in there and overcomplicate things. Uh, when a post just needs to be as simple as a couple photos in your logo. Um, of course, the fun stuff is great to put out there as well, uh, but definitely don't need to overcomplicate things. And sometimes all you need to do is throw your logo on a photo and Canva is an excellent tool to do that. Again, I'm going to go in, I'm going to change this paw print just to match the photo and maybe look a little bit like more purposeful. And I encourage you, um, that is a big thing with design as well. If you have a logo and it is not a PNG, so you're trying to put it on a design and has a white border around it, I would encourage you to look into getting that made into a PNG. Um, it really enhances your designs when you're throwing a logo that has a transparent background onto a design. Personally, as a consumer, as a graphic designer, I just love to see like a logo, like I said, with a transparent background. It's a lot easier to put on top of things. It looks a lot more purposeful. It looks a lot more detail oriented. So just something to think about um, with that. And yeah, so those are kind of the tools I wanted to cover today. Um, once again, thank you for joining me today and participating in our digital spring training. Uh, remember that content creation is a journey of growth and with dedication and practice and a willingness to explore new techniques, you'll gradually evolve and discover your own unique style that will resonate with your audience. Uh, embrace your beginnings and let your creativity shine through, regardless of where you currently stand in your design skills. 
This is only the beginning. There are so, so, so many tools on Canva to explore and learn. And lastly, I just want to mention that, of course, we value your input and want to ensure that our training content aligns with your needs and interests as business owners. So if you don't mind, just scan the QR code on the screen and it'll bring you to a Google form that will allow you to provide us with topics and suggestions for Lunch and Learns in the fall. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Grace. Um, definitely with some good information. I definitely want to try out some of those things as well. So um, just wanted to check for a couple questions if we had some. So um, yeah, I see a couple here. One, I know you had mentioned a little bit about um, free versions and pro versions. So is there a difference or what are the biggest differences between the Canva free and Canva pro? Uh, both the Canva tool, like both the free and paid version of Canva are so great. Um, I'd say personally, I use both. Um, I use a personal version at home and I use a pro version when I'm at work. And the biggest difference I believe is just the access to different assets. So stock images, stock graphics, stock video, obviously you have a lot more access to different types of templates and things like that, um, as well as the brand kit option for pro um, is great. But ultimately, I'd say the biggest difference between the two is the assets in which you have access to, which a lot of stock image websites um, have so much more. So if you are on the free version, there is other options to find stock. Uh, images, videos, all that sorts of things. Um, if you are, if anyone in the presentation today is ever looking for uh, guidance in the directions of finding better stock material, uh, definitely reach out to me. I can help you with that. But of course, I'll stress at the end of the day, uh, organic content is better than stock content. So if you can be using your own photos, your own video, that is definitely going to do better in terms of engagement than using stock material anyways. So again, that would just be what I find the biggest difference between the two is. Perfect. Um, and then are there any other good resources that will help me further learn about using Canva? So Canva itself has a resort, like a huge library of resources. Um, called the Canva Design School. Um, it's great. It has short tutorials, videos, and um, just like small condensed courses on different aspects of Canva. So whether you're wanting to learn to make TikTok videos or corporate videos with Canva or social media posts, posters, print materials, they have a huge library of resources on their own platform for people. Of course, if you're wanting to learn more about Canva than what I touched on today, uh, sign up for the DSS if you haven't already. If you have worked with me in the past and want to learn more, please just reach out to us with the DSS because I'd be happy to do an hour session on Canva and answer all your questions. Perfect. Um, and I see one other question here from Pat. Um, are there ways to have clickable content uh, details on your Canva design? Um, it's dependent on, I guess, what platform you are putting it out on. Of course, on Instagram, nothing's going to be clickable unless you add their clickable features. So if you're doing an Instagram story, obviously you have to add the stickers and stuff like that to have clickable material. Um, if you have a video, you can add animations and that sort of thing on Canva, which is great. But as for clickable material, I'd say it's pretty well, like I said, dependent on the platform you're planning to use it on. Um, I'm sure there is ways to integrate it, um, probably a little bit beyond myself, but 
yeah, that would be what I have to say on that. Yeah. And obviously another option, just like you have here is, is that QR code kind of thing. Obviously it's not clickable, but it does kind of, uh, go to a link or something like that. Yeah. That's a good point too, that you can make QR codes on both the free version and the pro version of, of Canva. I'll even just quickly show here, um, in my, if you go down into the, this apps portion of Canva, obviously some are exclusive to the pro version, uh, but this in here is where you can um, create QR codes. So um, that's a great way to streamline digital and print materials, especially if you have posters, postcards, anything maybe in a lobby or a waiting room, having a QR code that links to your website, social media, uh, Google reviews can be super beneficial for businesses and you can do it all in Canva, both free and pro versions have this feature. So I encourage you, if you are interested in doing a QR code, do it straight from Canva. Uh, there's so, um, there's so many like different websites and apps out there that you can build QR codes, but I've definitely had the best luck with Canva and creating QR codes. Awesome.